Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, I am going to teach you how to read a karyotype. Now, these questions on the surface might seem easy, but sometimes we overlook important terminology and we overlook some differences in karyotypes. And because we don't practice these very often in class, I find that it becomes a weakness that we can actually fix really, really easily. Now, if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And if you are in matric, you should think about getting my study guide, the cheat sheet, which is available on my website, missangler.co.za. Now, the first step to understanding karyotypes is we really need to break down the um, terminology around the structures that we're going to see. So first things first, let's actually talk about the word karyotype. You might be interested to know that the word karyo refers to nucleus. And so essentially what we're looking at is your nucleus type. What makes you you? Now, when we look at your karyotype, we are going to look at your chromosomes. Now, your chromosomes come in two kinds. The first 22 pairs are what we call autosomes. Now, the name is already here for us on this diagram. And they are paired by their shape. They are paired by their size. And finally, if they carry similar genes. Now, you will notice I didn't say same genes. And that is because you can carry the eye color gene, but one of your chromosomes could have the blue eye color and the other one could have the brown eye color on it. So they don't have to have the same exact version of the gene. They just need to have like the same type of gene, if that makes sense. And so that's why we use the word similar and not same. Now, we do get this very often in exams. They're going to ask you, how do you put your chromosomes in pairs? Remember, we put our pairs um, together in a homologous pair. That is the word that I want you to use in your exams and test. And that homologous pair is made by the shape, the size, and whether or not they have similar genes. Now, the final outstanding pair of chromosomes that you have are called sex chromosomes. But I really want you to know that in a lot of exams, you need to know the alternative name and you need to use the correct name. The correct name when you are referring to sex chromosomes is what we call gonosomes. Now, I know that it's another word for you to learn, but it's really important that you know autosome and gonosome, as in many exams, in particular the final exam, they don't accept sex chromosome as an alternative for the word gonosome. So I suggest that you know this word. Now, your gonosomes are your 23 set or your 23 pair at the very end. And depending on what sex you are, you could be XY, as you can see here, which would be a male karyotype. Or if you have two Xs, you would be a female. And so right at the very beginning, whenever you get a karyotype, you need to determine number one, what sex is this person? And you're going to look at the very end of their karyotype. Right at the end, you will see, do you have two chromosomes that are of the same size? Then they are going to be a female. And if you have an individual with one large and one small chromosome, then you know you are looking at a male. But now what I want to look at is what happens when meiosis doesn't go right? Um, and you have abnormal meiosis and what we call non-disjunction, how that affects your karyotype, how to read the karyotype, and what to look for when it comes to different syndromes. Now, according to our exam guidelines, we need to be able to identify and describe a very specific karyotype, which is a karyotype showing Down syndrome. Now, what I want you to look for here is an extra autosome. So Down syndrome is linked to having an extra autosome. Specifically, we are looking for this one over here, which is already ringed for us, number 21. Now, other things they might ask you in the test would be, well, is this a boy or a girl or male or female? Again, you look right at the very end and you're going to look for this pair 
And this one is conveniently labeled XY. So we know it is a male. If it wasn't labeled, I also know it's a male because the Y chromosome is always much, much shorter than the X chromosome. And if you compare it to all the other chromosomes, it is the only pair where their sizes don't match. Everybody else's size, remember, because they're homologous, must be the same. Now, in Down syndrome, you have an extra number 21, and something has occurred during meiosis in the formation of that egg cell or sperm cell that formed that future person and they ended up having specifically an extra number 21. Now I want to bring this to your attention. Not only do you need to be able to identify Down syndrome out of a karyotype, you also need to explain how it occurred. Now what I have done here is I have taken the exact wording we need to use in an exam in order to get full marks and this wording comes straight out of your exam guideline. Now, what you need to do is when you're explaining non-disjunction and Down syndrome, you need to stipulate that, number one, Down syndrome is occurred due to non-disjunction, specifically on chromosome 21 during anaphase. Now, those three words or phrases already can gain you up to three marks already. So it's really important to include them. The next important thing you need to mention in how Down syndrome occurs is it leads to you having an extra chromosome 21. But now this is the interesting part. A lot of students just stop right there and they don't go any further. The problem is that's not how you make a person. That statement is how you make a gamete. Right now, this gamete has an extra number 21, but we want to make a person with Down syndrome. So we need the second part to the answer. Now, the second part of the answer is the fusion between an abnormal gamete, which is the one that has the X chromosome, extra chromosome, and a normal gamete may lead to Down syndrome. And so that is the next part of your answer to show that you understand. Now, there are some substitutions that you can insert in this answer. For example, you can talk about it being 2N plus 1, um, you can talk about aneuploidy, you can talk about the fact that you can have monosomy. I think if you are not comfortable with those words, I would avoid them completely. And I would much rather you focus on this explanation, which has come from the guideline. Now, the final thing that's actually missing from this answer is how many chromosomes then does a person with Down syndrome actually have? Well, this 2N plus 1 specifically in uh, Down syndrome means you're going to have 46 chromosomes, excuse me, 47 chromosomes. You're supposed to have 46. So 46 is the original correct number, but you have 47. Specifically, you have that extra chromosome on number 21. Now, the next karyotype I want to show you is when you are missing a chromosome. You see, the one we did before for Down syndrome is when you have an extra chromosome. I'm going to show you what happens if you have a missing one. Now, specifically, the example I'm using is you are missing a gonosome. Now, remember, gonosomes are your sex chromosomes, and an example of an outcome is what we call Turner's syndrome. And Turner's syndrome, if we have a look here, all the autosomes are correct. They each have um, only two or a pair per chromosome. But if you have a look right at the end here, it's already circled for us, you will notice that this individual only has one X chromosome. Now, a couple of things. Number one, you do not need to know that it is called Turner's syndrome. It's not in the guidelines. You don't need to learn all the different syndromes off by heart. The only one you need to know off by heart is Down syndrome. However, they can give you a paragraph in the exam and they can expect you to explain what you're seeing based off of the information they've given. And so if you are going to have to identify what's the problem here, then they are looking for you to tell them there is only one X chromosome. Now, this can happen in a multitude of ways as well, but again, it all comes back down to non-disjunction. Instead of gaining an extra X chromosome, you now are on the other side of the meiosis. You're the cell who's missing its chromosome because your chromosome is in another cell somewhere else. And that's what happens in Down syndrome. You have too many number 21s. Now, that extra number 21, that's left a cell somewhere missing one. So that gamete will have one fewer 
chromosomes necessary. And that's also what we're seeing here now with Turner's syndrome. And this again can occur non-disjunction occurring during anaphase, anaphase one or anaphase two, where the chromosomes fail to separate. But most specifically, that answer we used earlier, you're going to substitute in six chromosome or most correctly, the gonosome. And you're going to talk about having one less gonosome instead of saying you have one more number 21. Now, as always, I like to finish off my lessons with a quick terminology recap. Please use these words to make flashcards, terminology lists, because often you are not getting full marks because you are not using terminology in your answer or you don't understand the question because the question has too much terminology in it for you to unpack. Now, first things first, we do need to know what a autosome is, which remember is the first 23 pairs of your chromosomes. We then spoke about a gonosome, which is your sex chromosomes. They are the last pair, either XX or XY. And I also spoke about homologous pairs and what makes a homologous pair a homologous pair, which is the fact that they are either the same size, same shape, or have similar genes on them. Then we spoke about the origins of the word karyotype and what it means, which basically very roughly translated means it is your nucleus type. It is what's showing inside your nucleus. We then went on to how non-disjunction, which is the failure of chromosomes to separate, how that plays a role in how we end up with extra chromosomes, specifically looking at Down syndrome, which is when you have an extra number 21. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.